Welcome to Go After Dark. In Go After Dark, we code real-time effects and just panic instead of canceling context. Today, we take a break from tunnels and take a look at drawing some very basic 3D effects. We'll try to build up a very simple 3D scene and see what we can do with that. So let's get started. The first major difference from the previous effects is that we draw this completely in grayscale. That means that we draw values from 0 to 255, from black to completely white. To make it look a bit nicer, we apply a palette before it's displayed on screen, which basically goes from black to a color and then to white. That gives it a nice presentation. So that is what we initialize here in the beginning. If we go further down, we see that we uh, create a gray image to draw on. We don't load any images since we don't need any textures or anything for, uh, for this effect. We do as we've done before, where we store each line of the screen we are drawing to into a separate slice. Now we get to the, um, to the fun part, where we generate some uh, points in 3D space. I have created a simple structure called chord, which holds the X, Y and Z coordinates. These coordinates represent the position in 3D space. The scale and the size is fairly arbitrary, but for now we're using some values that make sense in terms of what camera we set up. In terms of the coordinate system, again, there's uh, some difference in uh, what, what each axis represents. I like having X and Y uh, the same as on the screen. So X is horizontal, Y is vertically, uh, and have C going from from zero at the screen into positive, further away from the camera. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Some will say that one is more correct than the other. This is how I prefer to have it. So please bear that in mind that it might be different in uh, other places you, uh, you see it. So let's look at the uh, coordinates we are generating. First of all, I'm generating 50,000. 50, I'm making a slice of uh, coordinates and I'm generating all points within a, a cylinder. That means we calculate a random angle from zero to two pi's. We then choose a random radius from zero to three. And we choose a, a random position between zero and 50 on the depth axis, on the C axis. We use a bit of math to uh, change the angle and, and apply the radius. This means that all the dots should end up inside the cylinder we are defining. So now that we have our dots, we are ready to try to draw them on the screen. So let's take a look at that. Okay, let's take a look at how we can render this. In our render function, the first thing we do is we clear a screen. Actually, we don't clear it exactly. What I've done here is I take the previous image and I divide all output values by two. This creates a fairly simple, but also very fast motion blur effect. Obviously, you can also divide by more if you want the effect to be less pronounced, but you can see it in action in a bit. Then we have some uh, rotation. We will skip that for now. As you can see, it's disabled. Then we create a variable called T2, which goes from zero to two to zero. It is used right below, where we set our offset for C, our depth. It effectively moves the camera. This is actually a quite common thing. So when you render a 3D scene, your camera is always at zero, zero, zero. 
pointing along a specific axis, the C axis in this case. What this also means is that everything we draw, we must move in front of the camera as if the camera was positioned in 3D space. So the camera in terms of rendering is actually static, but the, the, the world is moved in front of the camera. So it seems as if the camera is moving in 3D space. So that is what we're doing here. We are moving all points uh, with a specific offset. So it'll look like the camera is moving inside the dots we're drawing. Then our next task is to find what I call max C here. This is the maximum distance from the camera we'll draw an object. Another thing we do is we reduce the brightness of each dot the further it is from the camera. Actually, it's not the exact distance. We are using the C value, which is the axis aligned distance. So it's not the exact distance, but calculating that is kind of expensive and involves all kind of square roots and things that are just way too slow. So we use the C as a good approximation of the distance. That is also another advantage of having the camera at zero, zero, zero. That means the absolute C value, we can simply use that as the approximate distance of the object. Then I have uh, some scaling. Um, for now, I've disabled it, but we'll look at it later. And now we get to the actual drawing of the dots. So we range over all our dots. We add our C offset to the uh, C value. We check if it's less than or equal to zero, it's considered behind the camera. Again, it's good to have, uh, have the camera at zero, 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 because it allows us to do this check very quickly. Same with the maximum C value. So if either of these are true, we simply skip to the next point and don't consider this at all. Then we apply the scale to X and Y, which is one for the time being, and do what's called a perspective projection. Again, it's good that we have our camera at zero, 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 because we can simply divide by the distance. So what we have is we have dots in X and Y, and it has a depth. The thing is that the further away it is from the camera, the closer X and Y are to the center of the camera, which means the, the further it is away, the, the closer it gets to zero, zero. So that's why when, when it's very close, C is very small, so it doesn't get moved towards the center very much. And then the opposite is also true. If it's very far away, C is very big and the points are moved very close to the center of the screen. Good. Then we have two parts we are skipping right now. The final thing is that we check the output X and Y and check if they are inside a screen, and then we simply draw them. So we check Y first, we check X afterwards, we find the line for Y, and then we read the previous value and we add a value that gets smaller, the bigger C is, meaning the further it is from the camera, the, the less bright will the dot be. So let's take a look at this. Okay. So right now we are moving inside the cylinder of dots. One of the things we can see it's, is that since our screen starts at zero, zero up here, everything is kind of skewed to, to one of the sides. So the first thing we'll do is we'll move the center down to the actual center of the screen. Let's do that. So we do that by removing this if. What we do is we add half the width and height to X and Y. Let's have a look at how that looks. Nice. So now it's nice and centered and we are moving in back and forth inside the center of the cylinder. So basically what we did is move the center of uh, the camera from here to down here by basically doing the opposite right before we draw our pixels.
You can also see the uh, rather nice motion blur effect. Since this is based on the previous frame, an interesting thing is that if we press space, the trails goes away because the previous picture is the same as the current one. So it just gets added on top. So one of the downsides of this is that it's frame rate dependent because obviously it depends on how the previous picture was drawn. But in general, it looks quite nice. So I mentioned I added some scaling that is currently disabled. Let's disable the disable and see how that looks. And boom, there we go. <laughs> so now all the, uh, the, the points are moving in and out as the time passes on. We scale with the scale factor we've selected. This goes from zero to two to zero. So that is why it expands and contracts. We don't do any scaling to C, so it's actually uh, contracting into a, a very small, uh, basically point cylinder. But the way we're drawing it makes it kind of hard to see because single dots don't convey that depth. Anyway, the uh, final thing I added to this was bit of rotation so it's now completely crazy what we do here is we simply calculate a rotation that we want to apply and we calculate the sine and cosine of the angle when we get down to our rendering we do a simple 2d rotation this is how you do a simple 2d rotation around zero zero since our camera is also centered at zero, zero, we can use this rather simple operation to do a 2D rotation. So we do that after the perspective projection and before we move stuff. So we keep the rotation around zero, zero. Let's have a look at how it looks with that. Boom. And we rotate. So now Everything is completely crazy. We can see we have a very decent frame rate of 1500 frames per second. So even though we are actually doing quite a few things, it's rather quick effect. It is not the most mind blowing, but it is a nice and fun little effect. Also, it's something we can continue to work on and try to improve. Obviously drawing dots is a bit uninteresting but we can work on that in the future. So that was our first adventure into 3D stuff. I hope it gave a good insight into the very basics of 3D and hope it wasn't too intimidating. So hopefully that can also get you started on doing some fun stuff in 3D. In our next episode, we'll look into drawing something a bit more interesting than dots so we'll take a look at how to quickly draw some 2d sprites and scale them up and down stuff like that but until then you can visit afterdark.classpost.com to find links to the code and also run the effect in a web browser be sure you have subscribed and enabled notifications you can also follow me on twitter to get updates on when the next episode is out Feel free to share your creations on Twitter with the hashtag GoAfterDark. But thank you for your time and good night.